right, well, it's good once again to continue our study. Dr. Randall Reagan's Growing Your Friendship with Christ. And we're going to be looking at chapter 2 tonight. And uh, John's going to come and he's going to lead us in our study of chapter 2. Chapter 2 is entitled, How Did Things Get So Bad? Do you ever wonder why there is death, hunger, pain, and sorrow in this world? Let's read a few verses about the hardships of life. The word death is listed 351 times in the Bible, and there's lots more for the word dead and die. Let's read an example. Let's go to Genesis 5. This is the first man ever to live. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Hunger is another part and pain of life after the fall. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy Chapter 28, and we'll read uh, verse 48, 28, 48. Therefore, thou, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. There is also pain. Let's go to Job chapter 14. Job chapter 14, verse 22. It's talking about Job directly. But his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. All of these things are here on earth because of one reason. So how did things get so bad? God's word teaches us how things got so bad. God reveals what happened in the conversation between the serpent and the woman. Recorded in Genesis chapter 3, 1 through 7. And this is where we're going to be, how our text is going to be in Genesis chapter 3. We'll start reading in verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Let's see what God told Adam. Did they directly disobey God? Was the serpent telling the truth? Let's see what God said in Genesis 2, 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Adam and Eve had clearly disobeyed God. They followed the words above the serpent, of the serpent, above their creator and their sustainer of life. What were the results of this action? Adam and Eve now knew good and evil. We're on page 8, by the way. But where did evil come from? 
how could evil enter a very good world that God had created? God created spirit beings called angels to worship and serve Him. The angels had been created to be ministering spirits that would obey God's Obey God, listening to His commandments. Let's go over to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, and we'll read verse 20. Bless ye, bless the Lord, ye His angels, that excel in strength, and do His commandments, hearkening unto the voice of His word. However, God allowed the angels to choose. In Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, the bad choice of an angel called Lucifer is seen. Let's go to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. It says, God speaking, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which, did we, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Let's look at what pride can do to someone. That was definitely pride in Satan's heart. Let's go to Psalm chapter 10. Psalm 10. And verse 4 and following. The wicked, though the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be an adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are previously set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly, as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand. Forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked condemn, contempt, condemn God? He hath said in his heart, Thou will not require it. Thou hast seen it. For thou beholdest mischief and spite, to require it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. The proud will all fall. I like that picture of God breaking the arm of the wicked. After Lucifer's rebellion against God, he was called Satan, which means adversary, one who opposes. Let's turn to 1 Peter. The books right before Peter's are the books right before John. The um, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, 
be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Satan is the one who opposes God. He's also called the devil, which means false accuser, one who slanders. The devil accuses Christians of wrongdoings before God. He is also called the great dragon and the old serpent. Let's uh, turn to Revelation chapter 12. This describes our evil adversary. Revelation 12, 9 through 10. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which has accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Eve, back in the Garden of Eden, had made a bad choice by listening to Satan. And Adam followed her. Adam and Eve chose to sin against God. Therefore, God judged them for their sin. They learned that disobeying God did not help them, but it rather hurt them. According to Genesis 3.8, what did Adam and Eve do when God came to see them? Let's go read that. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. They went and hid. Why do people hide? Because they were ashamed. What did Adam answer God in Genesis chapter 3, 9 through 10? Let's read it. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Let's keep on reading 11 through 13. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And this sounds like the blame game to me. Adam blamed the woman, and the woman blamed the serpent. God knew what they had done, but he wanted them to admit that they had disobeyed. Adam told God that the woman that God had given him gave him the fruit, so he ate it. The woman admits to being deceived. She said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The Lord God judges the serpent. The woman and the man, all three, deserve judgment. To better understand the judgments God gave, answer all these questions from Genesis chapter 3. We're going to read an overview of it first, uh, 14 through 19 of Genesis chapter 3. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, said he, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow in thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 
And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, thou hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Thou shalt eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. How did God judge the serpent in Genesis 3.14? The serpent now had to crawl in its belly. It was also cursed above all the other animals. How did God judge Satan, who used the serpent? In verse 15, God said that he would let Satan win a few battles, but Satan would ultimately lose in the long run. Jesus, he would lose to Jesus, which is the seed of the woman. How did God judge the woman? In verse 16, the woman will have worse pain in childbearing and will be under the rule of her husband. How did God judge the man? God cursed man by making it harder to plant and to till up the ground. Thorns will grow there. Thorns will grow, and there is a death penalty, and the working hard is unpleasant. Why did God want Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of the life of life? Let's go to Genesis 3:22. Let's read that first. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Why did God not want Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of life? God did not want Adam and his descendants to have to live in the sinful state forever. Let's read again. Uh, this is the most important. One of the most important parts, Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is God talking to Satan. God deals a death blow to Satan for his rebellious actions. God's judgment in this verse obviously goes beyond the serpent. God promised that there was going to be a male descendant of the woman... Who would crush Satan's head. This is a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ, who defeated Satan when the punish when this is a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was punished for the sins of all people on the cross. The crucifixion bruised Christ's heel. But excuse me, but it crushed Satan's head by destroying his power over people by giving them a way to receive forgiveness in God for their sin and have a, he gave them a way to receive forgiveness of for their sin and have a relationship with God that results in their gaining victory over Satan's deception and spending eternity in heaven with the Lord Satan is a defeated enemy but his pride and rebellion against God we know from the Bible that he will fight against God until the end, when he will be judged and condemned. Let's read these three verses. I picked out a few, and uh, they picked out a few. Genesis, uh, Revelation 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. Revelation 2, verse 7, yep. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Let's read Genesis 22. And we're going to read not just verse 2, but 1 through 3. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, 
was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, for the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And the last verse is verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. They may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. What has happened to the tree of life? And then it gives the verses. The tree of life is now in heaven. God removed it from the Garden of Eden and put it in heaven. When the curse is lifted by Jesus, God will give the ones who are in heaven to eat of the tree of life. After studying the events in Genesis chapter 3, can you explain how Adam and Eve caused the fall of humanity? They ate of the tree, which was a direct violation to God's law. This act plunged all of humanity into spiritual separation from God. And I love how Pastor Reagan put it. It results in immediate spiritual death and future physical death. And finally, eternal death for people who do not choose to believe in God. The, de the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11, 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. 2 Corinthians 11.3 That's 1 Corinthians, sorry. I'm in the wrong passage. Second Corinthians 11, verse 3. It says, But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Lucifer, who is called the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, or Satan, misled Eve through the serpent to believe that God was keeping something good from her. Adam followed his wife by eating the fruit which she gave him, disobeying God and causing humanity to fall into sin. Each person makes choices that God has given him the opportunity and the responsibility to make. Since we know it is important to make good choices, why do we so often make bad choices that hurt us and other people? What is wrong with us? And we will find out next time.